Good morning, everybody. Okay, so I'm glad everyone's done with breakfast and there's a lot, lot more people. Uh, Apple's actually bought me a lot of time. Okay, so um, when I was first invited here, I was thinking what I should be talking about, right? Uh, it's not easy to come up with a particular topic that would associate with everybody. You know, it's all about building affinity, right? And that's one of the things. So before I start, uh, let's start off with the AV. How many of you guys have been to the United Arab Emirates? Two. Okay. Uh, how many of you all know the United Arab Emirates? Okay, so that's good. Brilliant. I'm just doing my tourism bit here, Apple. Um, how many of you all know Dubai? Okay. So all of you all must be knowing the tallest tower, Burj Khalifa. Okay, that's brilliant. So that's, to start with, brilliant marketing by Dubai, right? They've built a lot of landmarks. They have quite a lot of stuff going on that keeps it engaging. There's always constant communication with the world, not just people, right? And that's what makes it really enticing. I mean, not many of you all might know Sharjah. Oh, you know Sharjah? How many people know Sharjah? Okay, so I'm from Sharjah. Okay, I stay in Sharjah. I was born in Dubai. Uh, I'm, of course, Indian. But the reason I wear the Kandura today, this is called the Kandura, which is uh, the national dress of the UAE. I wear it almost every weekend whenever I go out. And uh, Salaam people is something that I say on my vlogs. When I say Salaam, I basically mean peace. And I offer peace to everybody. It might not be as uh, a monologue right now, but when I do this, I do this in front of the camera. And when I do it in front of the camera, I try to keep it as engaging as possible because you need that person's attention. So just to start again, and how I do it in my blog is, Salaam people! So can I have you guys say the same thing? One, two, three. Salaam people! Right? This is, this is how I do it. It builds a lot of energy in me. It gets me working on that video that I'm working on, the vlog that I'm working on. But anyways, let's start with the presentation. So to first start off with, I'm part of the Youth Media Council. What is the Youth Media Council? Well, like Apple said about those influencers who create a lot of mess, we try to fix them. We come up with regulations, we come up with laws, just to make sure that the influencers do not promote things without trying it out themselves just for the sake of money, right? All of us uh, do follow a lot of people. Uh, we try to get a little bit of inspiration. This inspiration is positive, negative, depends on you. You're the one who decides that, okay? And it's most important for you to understand that you do not blindly believe what an influencer says. First of all, I hate the word influencer, but uh, this, is, this has become a trendy buzzword. Right? So that's what the Youth Media Council does. We basically regulate media. We come up with initiatives. And why the Youth Media Council came into play, that's going to be today's story. And I hope I'll be able to probably create some kind of space where people will think about empowering the youth. We all talk about shaping the brand's future, right? Shaping the brand's future for the youth, shaping the youth's uh, approach for the brand, it's all about future, right? I mean, we've been doing these talks for like past three, four years. And I just kind of have a little different opinion, which we'll come to in a bit later. But yeah, so coming back, Youth Media Council was formed by the National Media Council. The National Media Council regulate games, regulate media, regulate paper, newspapers, radio, all those kinds of media, and including digital media. Even when it comes to games, a lot of people must be playing PUBG. Yeah? Okay. A lot of guys play PUBG. Brilliant. We don't regulate PUBG <laughs> because it's online and it's available to public. There's already Google and there's Apple Play Store that take care of that. So yeah, so this is what the National Media Council does. Apart from that, I have my own blog, like I mentioned. I don't have as, say, a thousand subscribers on YouTube. I have about 453, but those people mattered to me a lot. Because of those 400 odd people, I have my own TV show. 
and I talk about technology, I talk about people's stories, people's failures. I love talking about people's failures because it's not about creating a success story. It's about learning from that person's mistake, learning from what that person failed at and to be able to do it better. That's something, that's an experience that you might not have as that person's failure, but then you will at least know how to take things up ahead in your life. And that's what I like to focus on. So how many of you all know Salman Yusuf Khan? Dance Seria Dance, first reality show winner. Okay, so I was with him last month. Okay, he came down to Dubai and I interviewed him on my blog. I spoke with him. And he's gone through a lot of failures in life to get to where he was or where he is now, right? Currently, he's in London shooting for ABCD3 with Remo D'Souza, all that's happening. But before all of this, he was just an ordinary guy from Bangalore, right? Who did not really know that dancing would have been his future. So things like that, these are success stories you want to listen to because you might really know, not know what you want to do in your future, right? So it's all about now. What do you want to do now? That's a question you need to ask yourself towards the end of it. I'm also the ambassador for digital technology and media with the Middle East Youth Expo. Now, all of this has one thing in common, the word youth. I'm not saying that I represent the whole of youth in UAE. The National Media Council or the Youth Media Council, I'm the only Indian on board. The rest are Arabs. The reason I'm passionate about it is because I want to do something for the youth not just the Emirati youth or the Arab youth, but the whole youth together. I have Emirati friends, I have Arab friends, I have a lot of Indian friends, Pakistani friends. Dubai is a melting pot of cultures and that's how I know a bit of Tagalog. You know, and that's how I speak a little more languages. I learned Malayalam in a span of, I think, six months. I learned Konkani, which is from Mangalore, in a span of two months. Um, I learned these languages, Gujarati, Punjabi, because all of this, you've got that many kind of mixed community over there in Dubai that you're exposed to all that kind of culture, right? And I was telling Apple as well, she's uh, in Malaysia. Uh, my mind opened up when I did my first travel to Malaysia. That's actually my first international trip by myself. And all of us here in this room have to do that to be able to get to understand different kinds of perceptions. When I first came into this room wearing a kandura, not many people were like, they had this perception, they kept staring, they were trying to understand what I am, right? Or where I'm from. Because you don't do that. The reason I did this right now, right here, is to get that perception out of you. It's important to understand that when you look at a product that a brand sells you, don't assume things out of it. Don't assume things out of an influencer saying that this product is amazing. Yes, the influencer or the, let's call it, the, the digital uh, brand ambassador talks about the product, right, by his experience. If you want to experience it, experience it yourself and see whether it's actually worth it or not. Why did I get into vlogging was because I don't want my children to grow up watching people driving fancy cars, you know, having or staying in the biggest hotels or the hotels. Uh, I'm staying here, but still, I, I don't, I'm not bringing this up, right? They, they put me up here, but anyways. So uh, it's really important for you to get that knowledge and understand exactly how to build that profile and build yourself as a brand. As Apple said, for me, uh, Wherever, wherever I worked, whichever company I worked with, I always had this with me, right? That's me and my brand. And that's Hammy Vlogs, where even if I walk on the streets of UAE, not everyone will know me, but that's fine. It's all right. Not everyone needs to know your brand. Whoever works with you needs to know your brand, irrespective of wherever you're working, irrespective of that. But anyways, let's move on. That's a lot about me. Uh, okay. So this is one of the most important things that I want to discuss with you today, is the youth, okay? I'm not going to talk to you as 
uh, a brand enthusiast, I'm going to talk to you as yourself for you to understand exactly why is it important for you guys to have a good platform in India. Okay? We've built something called the Youth Council. Does any one of you know when International Youth Day is celebrated? 12th Jan or is it 12th November or August? 12th August? Okay. So yeah, 12th August is celebrated as International Youth Day. Okay? In UAE, we celebrate youth every single day. And why do we do that? Because let's take, let me give you a bit of an understanding and experience on what happened with me. 400 people applied to be part of the Youth Media Council. 400 media professionals and media students, out of which only 12 were selected members. And I ended up being part of that. When I got into them, into the system, that's when I understood what exactly is happening within the youth community. Every single day, there's an event. Every single day, there's a discussion on businesses. Every single day, there's skill sharing. And all of that really got me inspired. Because I never knew I would be part of such an amazing community where people are sharing so much things on a daily basis within each other, right? I mean, for example, one of you all might know video editing. The other person might know how to carry a camera. If you both collaborate, you could start up your own YouTube channel. Yeah, it's the world of collaboration. And I believe a lot about collaboration. It's not about competition, it's all about collaboration. This has been my motto from day one. And this is the most important thing, because when you do that, that's when things will change. That's when you'll progress. You'll meet a lot of people. You might have a circle of two people. The other person might have a circle of five people. Together, you're nine people. That's how it is. That's how you grow, right? So this is something that uh, Hizana Sheikh Mohammed, the, the Prime Minister of Dubai, said. The world celebrates International Youth Day. The UAE celebrates them every day with their education, empowerment, and responsibility. Our youth are a good example in achievement giving and leadership. So this is something that's really important for the youth, right? And this one here is our late Baba Zayed. Uh, I call him Baba Zayed because I was born in the UAE. He's the father of our nation, of UAE. I am an Indian citizen, yes, but I do very much respect his Anna Sheikh Zayed because he believed in tolerance and he believed in empowering youth. And this is something that grew from the country. And the leaders are basically advocating that right now. So that's something that's really important. You need leaders to advocate. What we have here is Her Excellency Shamal Mazrui. She is our youth minister. Now, youth minister, it, it means a person who's in charge of all the youth, right? She was empowered with this particular uh, designation when she was 22. When a country believes in the youth, it's important to have a leader to be able to take the youth together and create initiatives. Her Excellency Shamal Mazrui created so many initiatives that actually made a ripple effect. For example, for her to do things alone is not possible. You need to delegate stuff, right? You need to build a community. So what she did was she built an executive council. This executive council comprised of about 12, 13 people. Then she had the local youth council. We have seven emirates in the UAE. So you've got Dubai, Sharjah, Rasakema, Fuchera, Ajman, it goes on. So you've got seven emirates. In seven emirates, we have local youth councils. Okay? And then you have the ministerial youth council. This is basically councils within the government organizations. Okay, so if you're between the age of 18 to 35, you're eligible to join the Youth Council. Then you have the Corporate Youth Council. These are private sectors within the companies who basically are looking to create a Youth Council. And finally, you have the Global Youth Council. These are ones who primarily advocate on SDGs. Yeah, Sustainable Development Goals. So it's really important to have these councils 
Why? Because it's not a, a, a single person's initiative. It can't be a single person's dream. It can be a single, person, single person's vision, but they can't achieve it until and unless they have a brilliant team. And Apple also is part of startups, and she also agrees that you know, it's important to have a brilliant team to take that forward. And until you don't do that, you're not going to get anywhere. You're just going to be wasting time. All right? So this is what she did. This, what we have here, is the Youth Hub. What is the Youth Hub? The Youth Hub is a platform. It's an open space where the youth can go. You can play table tennis if you want to while you're waiting for a friend. But what it has is meeting rooms. It has conference rooms. So you can talk about being an entrepreneur. You can talk about a new idea. Why do you need places like these? Because this is spaces where people can come up, collaborate, create ideas every day, have some kind of an innovative idea that could change the world. Having a platform is super, super important. Without a platform, you wouldn't get anywhere. It could either be a small group on Facebook. It could be your own personal group on Instagram. It could be any of those. But until you don't have that, you wouldn't be able to create that one particular idea that you want to do with somebody. What they have right here is also multiple platforms apart from the Youth Hub. So you have the Youth Hub, which is an on-ground place. They have Youth Hubs created in Abu Dhabi and Dubai right now. And they're planning to create a lot more because it's been effective. There have been so many ideas that have been executed by the government of UAE that's changed a lot of people's lives. What you have here is the Youth Circle. We recently had uh, His Holiness Pope come down to uh, Abu Dhabi. And I was working very closely on that campaign. We had close to about 180,000 people come down from UAE as well as from the world to attend the Papal Mass, right? What happened here was we had a youth circle with all the international religious leaders and spiritual leaders and the youth. Why? Because the youth had questions and the leaders had to answer them. And we have this kind of an open conversation which keeps things Transparent. Now what happens here is that you're interacting with spiritual leaders you've never even interacted with ever, right? That's the kind of platform it creates. So we have one platform, which is the youth circle. Then after that, we also have something called the youth debates. Now this is where the brand can play a role. This particular debate was sponsored by MasterCard. And we were talking about one main debate, if the world would go cashless. Now it's a very big question, right? I lost that debate uh, because uh, the other team were very sure of getting Paytm out in the world, talking about India, and I was like stuck in UAE thinking like, you know, I mean, this whole thing is happening in UAE, of course, but I was still worried about cash, right? You want something in your hand to pay for, right? Yeah, I, I understand it's safe to have digital payments, but then you start thinking about this. Right now you're thinking about it, right? It's working on your mind. This is what MasterCard came in and did they worked and engaged with the youth in such a platform. So when a brand moves out of its regular ads, the annoying, unskippable YouTube videos, it makes a lot of difference because they're doing a lot more with the youth. That's the kind of engagement you want to build. You don't want to build engagement by just showing a youth-friendly uh, ad with uh, an influencer in there, flashing a credit card, saying that I bought this particular product and I'm getting 500 rupees back. It, it, it's, it's a communication for everybody, right? But when you do things like these, that's when everything changes. And that's what actually gets the youth engaged. Because you're trying to solve or probably uh, come up with a solution for a problem, or you're even probably discussing something that's happening right now, right? And of course, finally, within the youth hub, you have over here Google, Facebook, Instagram, coming down to the Youth Hub and creating workshops. This could be for future influencers, this could be for, uh, let's say, a person, a small business that wants to do something on social media and things like that. So this workshop actually helps a lot of people learn. So that's how important it is to have a platform. This is me and uh, Mr. Shashi Tharoor. Uh, it's not quite the opportunity for me to meet somebody like him. 
But because I was part of the Youth Media Council, um, I hosted an event which had about, I think close to about 1,000 people or so. And this was at the Sharjah Book Fair. When you start engaging with your own community, and when you start engaging with people outside your community, you build your own community within these communities, right? You have your own circles then. What I've learned over a period of time is that if at all you start working from now and stop talking about the future, you'd eventually do what you want to do in the future. You'll be able to get your goals, get your aim, get all of that that you need, that you require right now, then wait for another two, three years and expect somebody to be on stage and tell you about it. Um, over a period of time right now, especially with the kind of uh, interesting engagements I've had with various youth councils in the UAE, there's so many potential ideas that will be executed today. There'll be an, there'll be an amazing idea that'll be executed next week. And I believe that if all of y'all think together of building a platform, you know, or building a, a Facebook group page right now, right? Get everyone in one group page, start talking about your ideas, see how you could actually do something. You could, you could probably come up with a, uh, let's say an idea of creating a, a startup or an idea that could basically uh, change the way people communicate, things like that. It actually means a lot. And that's what will actually get a brand to come and talk to you then. Go and approach the brand, speak to them. Like Apple said, you know, you need to go and speak to these guys because if you don't go and speak to them, they'd never know that what you're doing. Speak about what you plan to do. Speak about it to your friends, your family. Uh, actually, no, don't speak about your, your family. Not gonna help. With friends, with friends, stick to friends, okay? So that's one of the most important things. And I really believe, yes, you, you'd, uh, you'd uh, love a brand, but build your brand yourself. Because it's really important to know one thing. If you don't evolve, you will dissolve. This is one of the most important things I've learned over a period of time. I could easily come down today and I've shown you some presentation on uh, youth marketing with a brand. But the reason I, I wanted to be transparent with you and tell you that it's important to build a platform because once you have this platform, then you'd be able to have an idea. Once you have an idea, you'll be able to have an execution plan. When you have that execution plan, you would be sitting here, say, two years from now, talking about it. So that's one of the most important things. And that's it, guys. If at all you have any questions, please feel free to drop me on Hammy Vlogs. Thank you.